these two boards are getting close to finished now. This is the transmitter board and the receiver board that plugs on top. The last main task to finish off the transmitter was to solder in these three BS-170s. So in the previous video, we could see that this NAND gate driver was providing plenty of drive on 40 and 20. And I swept the two low pass filters so we know that they're working satisfactorily well and that we have conductivity via this relay through to the output connection. Uh, the DC supply was in place and so really all I had to do was to solder in these BS-170s and I've just bent their leads into the parallel configuration. A little bit of wire bending there, a few jumpers to convey the drive onto the paralleled gates of the three FETs. Really the best way to use it, to test it, is to plug the two together. Just making sure, and I'm doing this through the camera lens, so I look a little bit clumsy, but just make sure that we're not one pin out. And press it in. And there it is. Ready for testing. To test, I'll plug in the speaker. This is a little makeshift CW key. Homebrew, of course. That goes into the key socket. This little temporary 0.1 inch pair of connectors is to the antenna and then a nice little 10 watt QRP dummy load on to that connector. Power is coming from my variable voltage current limited power supply and I've got it on 12 and a bit volts, 12.4 volts current limited at 1.5 amps. Let's hit the juice. So a little bit of noise there from the speaker, not much because it's a load. Receiver is working. And let's just key it. And there's the side tone. So listening with a monitor receiver on 7022.8. Good evidence of signal there. So the other place that you really want to monitor is transmitter current draw. So it's drawing 43 milliamps on receive, 6, 700 milliamps on key down. And let's have a look on the oscilloscope. So now the scope is on a times 10 probe and across the dummy load. And there's the output signal on 7022.2 there. And it's measuring 4.1 times 10 or 41 volts. 41 volts peak to peak. And a pretty good looking, pretty clean looking sine wave there. There's just a little hint of harmonic energy at the bottom peak. Just open that up. Yeah, so just a tiny little bit of uh, 14 megahertz energy, I suspect, or maybe something higher at the uh, bottom peak, bottom of the trough, at the trough of the waveform there. We'll check that on the spectrum analyzer later. So 4.1 volts on a times 10 probe is about 41, 42 volts. 44 volts peak to peak is plus 37 dBm. That's 5 watts. So on a 12.4 volt supply, delivering 5 watts into 50 ohms precisely as planned. Now let's go up to 20 meters 
which is uh, 14060. Just moving the station receiver up to 14060. All I have to do is to flick this toggle switch and that will flick the two relays across and uh, that will now key up the 14 megahertz oscillator and there's the signal on 20 meters frequency 14059.9 and 3.6 volts peak to peak find it on the station receiver that's 3.2 watts just going to wind the voltage on the variable power supply up a little bit I'll take it up to 13.8 volts and now looking at nearly 4 volts or well, 40 volts peak to peak so we're approaching uh, approaching 5 watts and I've just moved the power supply now up to 14.8 volts and uh, for 42 volts peak to peak there 42 volts peak to peak I'm just going to go one higher just out of interest so I'm on 15.8 volts and uh, 43 volts peak to peak so we're right on 5 watts there on a 15.8 volt rail which is not necessarily such a bad thing because I'm interested in running this little transmitter on a LiPo 4S pack and a LiPo 4S pack does run up around about 15.8 to 16.4 volts when fully charged so uh, I'm quite happy for this transmitter to be set up and to operate well at um, 15 to 16 volt range now let's have a look at this waveform it's not quite as clean as the 40 meter waveform a little bit of um, harmonic energy superimposed over the fundamental um, you can see a little kink here and a little bit of a higher frequency superimposed over the peaks this time so um, not a perfect sine wave we'll have a look at that on the spectrum analyzer okay let's go back to 40 meters and now I'm going to take it off the dummy load and I'm going to attach it to a live antenna and we'll just see how the transmit receive break-in works all right so we're now on a full-size external 40 meter dipole you can hear the band noise there just move over a little bit make room for the key so let's hear how this transmit receive switching sounds So there it is, uh, transceiving. There's a little bit of a click in the speaker. Going from transmit to receive and back again. Before this, uh, before this session, I, I did spend an hour or two just experimenting with a few circuit values. Just around the point where the side tone feeds into the audio amplifier the LM386 and uh, I did introduce a 100k series resistor in series with the audio line only because this uh, potentiometer was really lively uh, most of the audio gain swing was happening in the first 10 or 15 degrees of turn so that's um, evened it out a little bit uh, not perfect but probably acceptable I'm happy to live with that for the moment and maybe have a think about whether or not um, some improvements could be made. Now for the spectrum scan, I have to admit I don't actually have the connectors that allow me to dissipate 5 watts or so of RF power and then damp down through attenuators to a very low level for input to the, to the spectrum analyzer. So I'm going to do it a fairly crude way, uh, just with physical proximity. So I'm just going to place the uh, spectrum analyzer input, which is the tip of the 
PL259 there, I'm just going to place it in proximity to the hot end of the dummy load. Now, don't laugh. Uh, I do have to be careful when I do this, obviously. Um, and I should really have these taped down. But it's just a really simple test. Just a reminder that I'm using the poor man's spectrum analyzer. It's an SDR Play RSP1A, a fine SDR receiver for uh, the budget-minded ham and experimenter and uh, it has an equally fine spectrum analyzer software which of course comes free. I've set the spectrum analyzer to scan from 5 megahertz to 25 megahertz. These are the frequency markers across the top so 740 meters here, 20 meters will appear about here and 15 meters, 21 megahertz up here. Um, I'm not quite sure what these spikes are here. Um, this is an internal clock in the RSP1A. It's a, it's a known feature of the device at 24 megs. I'm not quite sure what 11.62 uh, megahertz is or these two smaller spikes. Key down now. And here's the fundamental right on just above 7 megahertz and it's about minus 40 dB. Let's look for the first harmonic at uh, 20 meters and there it is there, can't miss it and that's about minus 73 dB. I'll just bring it again, minus 73. So from about minus 40 to minus 73 that's about 33 dB down. Let's look at uh, the second harmonic or the 21 megahertz harmonic and that's at minus 76 so about 36 db roughly 36 db down and that's just with the proximity test um, not quite enough but what i'm going to do now is to connect the transmitter to a resonant 40 meter dipole and then I'm going to connect the RSP1A, the spectrum analyzer, to a two meter J pole, about 10 or so meters away from the dipole. So I'll be using the two meter J pole as a kind of a sense antenna. And the purpose of this test is to get an idea of what is actually being radiated by the transmitter on a 40 meter fully resonant antenna. Because when the transmitter is transmitting into a resonant antenna, you can consider the whole combination, um, the transmitting equipment, and the resonant antenna does play a role in the, or the spectrum of the emitted signal. So let's try this. So key down now, let's have a look for the fundamental. Okay, that's way too big, so it's off the scale so let's recalibrate to plus 10 so that point there is zero so keying down into the 40 meter dipole now so now at minus minus 18 db and see if we can find a second harmonic on there's a there's the harmonic on 14 megs and it's minus 72 and on 21 megahertz, uh, 2104, okay, minus 67, minus 68. Again, the fundamental uh, 17. So 68 minus 17 is uh, 51. So 45, measuring 45 to 50 dB um, harmonic suppression using the uh, external antenna test. It's nearly nine o'clock in the morning and I'm listening to Andy VK2AAK's Kiwi SDR. It's on the north coast of New South Wales at a place called Forster.
Now over to VK5 ARG, which is just north of the city of Adelaide. And a final test over at ZL1 ROT. This is a receiver at Rotorua. New Zealand. So a pretty weak signal but probably workable into ZL New Zealand. So I'm going to box this up now. I'll re-measure spectrum purity once the transmitter and receiver boards are inside a sealed case. Well, the transmitter seems to have come together quickly and that's really because the stages and the componentry around the PA were fairly thoroughly tested. So we knew that we had good drive and we knew the low pass filters were probably working. In the next episode, I'll commence work on the case, just get enough of the case in place so that this little rig can be backpacked or cycled up to a nearby hill and we'll take it out for a spin. Once again, I hope you're enjoying this series. I've had a lot of fun making it. This project is rapidly coming to its conclusion. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and the next one or two episodes to wrap up this series will be out soon. Until then, thanks for watching. See you next time.